Hi all, welcome to Simple Engineering, Engineering Simplified. I am Neetu Rahul. Today we are going to discuss about direct and indirect semiconductors. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Let's move to the video. Direct and Indirect Semiconductors a single electron is assumed to travel through a perfectly periodic lattice. So with the particle wave nature of the electrons, the likelihood of finding an electron at a particular location is described by the wave function. So the wave function is assumed to move in the x direction and it is given as phi of kx is equal to ukx of x e power jkx x where kx is the wave vector or propagation constant and uk of x that is you are this term uk of x it, it modulates the wave function according to the periodicity of lattice. So the propagation constant k which is also called as wave vector of the sinusoidal electromagnetic wave it is a measure of the change that undergone by the amplitude and the phase of the wave as it propagates in the given direction. So the value of the allowed energy that can be plotted versus this k that is your propagation constant and the periodicity of the lattice structure that is different in various direction so that the actual plot will be between e and k and that is a 3d1. So it is ek diagram. Uh, so the direct and indirect semiconductors in that an electron in minimum of conduction band that falls into the empty state in the maximum of the valence band. So electron transition across the band gap that is classified into two direct semiconductor and indirect semiconductor. So direct semiconductor means the minimum of the conduction band. So here you can see that this is your valence band and this is your conduction band in the diagram. So the minimum of the conduction band and the maximum of the valence band that occur for the same value of k that is your propagation constant. So the energy gap and the propagation constant ek diagram is shown over here. So uh, the electron making smallest energy transition from the conduction band to the valence band without a change in the k value. Its propagation value or propagation constant does not change without changing that the transition from the conduction band to valence band will take place. And in the process it gives out energy in the form of photon of light. So uh, this is used for LED lasers and all. So here you can see that uh, the energy gap eg and this is your valence band and conduction band. So transition from this conduction band to the valence band that is back to the valence band it will take place without any change in the k that is your uh, propagation constant. So at that time in this process it gives out while the electrons will be transiting from conduction band to valence band emission of photon will take place. So that is denoted as h mu which is, is your uh, equal to the energy gap. So indirect semiconductor means the minimum of the conduction band does not occur at the same k value as the valence band maximum. So in the uh, direct case it, it, was, it is taking place uh, without any change in the k value your propagation constant but here there occurs some change that is at the same k value it does not occur. So the electron that is promoted to the conduction band it requires a change of its momentum to make the transition balance to the uh, or back to the valence band. So an electron in the conduction band minimum falls to an empty state in the valence band maximum. It falls first to the defective state. So here you can see that first the uh, electrons in the conduction band it falls to a defective state and within that energy uh, gap or band gap giving off some uh, energy differences as heat. So here emission will be in the form of heat with a change in the k value. The propagation constant value is changed and it falls to the valence band maximum. So here both momentum and energy of the electron change will take place with the change in the propagation constant k. 
So next is electrons and holes. So uh, in this uh, we will be dealing with uh, even energy gap, conduction band, valence band. So all this there will be electrons and holes. So in metals there are a number of free electrons that can move easily under the influence of an electric field. So in semiconductor at 0 Kelvin the valence band is completely filled and the conduction band will be empty. So your valence band that will be fully filled with electrons and your conduction band is empty. When the temperature is increased, when the temperature starts increasing some of the electrons in the valence band they receive enough thermal energy and they will excite to the conduction band or they will move to the conduction band they will excite through or across this band gap and it will reach the conduction band so we have few electrons in the otherwise empty your uh, conduction band before it was empty now uh, electrons in the valence band after getting that thermal energy it will move up to the conduction band so few electrons will be there in the conduction band and in this uh, valence band which are the electrons that is having enough thermal energy and exciting at that time an empty space or empty state is created in the valence band and that is called hole. So the thermal energy that causes electron in the conduction band and hole in the valence band it is created by the transition of electron from valence band to conduction band and it is called electron hole pair. So once they got that uh, or they receive enough thermal energy the electrons in this valence band that will excite uh, or it will excite across the band gap and it will reach the conduction band. So when this electron will move up to the conduction band at that time there occurs some empty state or energy level in the valence band and that is called hole. So uh, after getting thermal energy electrons will be in the conduction band. So here transition of electron from valence band to conduction band is happening hole will be created so there will be an electron hole pair so an electron that is excited to the conduction band that is surrounded by a large number of unoccupied energy states and are free to move via many available empty states so here the energy band and the charge carriers in the semiconductor it is shown so here you have valence band it will excite the electrons in the valence band that will excite to the conduction band and it is surrounded by a large number of unoccupied energy states. Here you can see that uh, white color that is the empty uh, space or unoccupied space that is your holes and here you can see that the electrons will be occupied in the conduction band. So uh, these there itself it is free to move because of the available empty space. So current conduction in a semiconductor when the valence band is completely filled an electron J with a wave vector Kj that is matched with another electron J dash. So here you have an electron J which is having a wave vector Kj and another electron will be there that is denoted as J dash which is having a wave vector minus Kj and the two electrons that, that will be having opposite momentum. So the net current is zero unless one of the electron is removed. So in filled band with n electrons the current density that is given as j is equal to minus q summation of i to n vi that is equal to zero where your uh, vi means it is velocity and q is the charge. So when a hole is created by the excitation of the jth electron the current density is the sum of all electrons minus the contribution of your jth electron. So that is denoted in the equation here. So your first term that is 0. So your current density will be this minus and minus will become plus. So j is equal to plus q vj. So the current density due to the creation of the hall is same as the positive charge q. And the hall can be viewed as a positive particle with the same charge as electron. But it is not a particle at all, it is simply a uh, empty energy state. So in semiconductor we have electrons in the conduction band which can contribute to current because they move opposite to the direction of electric field and holes in the balance band which also contribute to current but they move in the same direction as the electric field. Uh, so 
uh, your holes that is created in the valence pan will be having uh, same direction or will move in the same direction of electric field and electrons that will move in the opposite direction of electric field so energy band description in an electric field <coughs> holes have opposite charge and the hall energy increases opposite to the electron energy and the hall seek it it is seeking lowest energy that that are on the top of valence band and electrons in the conduction band so here you can see that uh you, this is your conduction band and this is your valence band so electron energy is shown and the electron energies increase going while hall energies increase going down so if you can see that this is your hall energy so it will be uh decreasing or hall energies will increase while going down and electron energies will uh, increase while going up so the electron and the hall wave vector point in the opposite direction and these charge carriers move opposite to each other so uh, your ek diagram that is energy uh, band and your propagation constant that will be a function of the energy that energy means it will be your potential energy plus your kinetic energy and it versus the uh, wave vector which depends on the crystal direction so hope this is clear for everyone about the electrons and holes and the direct and indirect semiconductor if you find this video useful please share it with others thank you